Um, welcome and thank you for attending this virtual celebration of GradX 106, our annual graduate exhibition that showcases the tremendous talent and creativity of hundreds of artists, designers, and digital makers. I'm Anna Serrano, President and Vice Chancellor of OCAD University, and I'll be your host this evening. And this is my first GradX hosting, and I'm super excited. And I really wish that I could be with you all tonight um, in the Great Hall and all the various buildings that we have. But and alas, we're stuck here. But it's going to be a fabulous evening. I know it. Um, and I'd like now to invite Elder Dr. Duke Redbird to open the celebration. But before you come here, let me tell you the folks here a little bit about you. Um, he's an established and indigenous intellectual poet painter and broadcaster who is well known to the OCAD community for his enormous contributions in bringing indigenous approaches to art education. His legacy stretches beyond the work in Can his work in Canada um, and his art has been exhibited and his poetry has been published and translated in anthologies internationally. His poem, The Power of the Land, won a Juno Award that's a very rare thing. Like a, for a poet to win a Juno Award is pretty remarkable. And not not and this was not a long time ago. This was in 2019 when it was set to music by the Sultans of String. And in 2020, Dr. Redbird published a new volume of poetry entitled simply Poetry. And he, of course, I can't be I'll be remiss if I don't mention this, and he has a doctorate from OCAD U. So he's very he's one of our own. Thank you, thank you so much to for, for being here with us, Dr. Redbird. Over to you. Well, well, thank you for those kind words of introduction. It's a pleasure to be here with everybody. I just want to say Ani and Bojo and Sego Tansi to all my Indigenous uh, friends and greetings and welcome to uh, all of uh, OCAD University's uh, Grad X 106 opening celebrations. So I feel really honored and, and, and venerated in my capacity as a Anishinaabe elder to be invited to offer a few words of welcome uh, at this very special event this evening. I like to uh, just start by saying that uh, an ancient Greek uh, physician, Hippocrates, who has been called the father of medicine, once uh, said, Ars longa vita brevis, which translate as art is long, life is short. So ages before art was commodified, the practice of art had been used for the purpose of healing. Art was a medicine. And artists practice healing with their creativity. Today, the world needs healing. And artists, through imagination and creativity, can rediscover this cherished and time-honored tradition. Life is a constant apprenticeship toward wisdom. And whether intentional or not, the art you are practicing is the work of healing. Another time-honored tradition amongst the indigenous people is acknowledging our mother, the earth. Now, a land acknowledgement was never about land ownership because we could never own our own mother, the earth, but rather it's an acknowledgement that we are all the stewards of the land and each generation borrows its use for a brief time from our children and our grandchildren forever into infinity. So in keeping with this time-honored tradition, I would like to share this poem that I wrote in keeping with the original intention of honoring not just the land, but also the water and all the creatures that are sustained by our mother, the earth. It's called a dish with one spoon. 
The indigenous nations welcomed settlers from across the seas when they arrived in their territories. Such beauty revealed before the settler's eyes was beyond their ability to describe. In all the languages that the settlers spoke, there were no words that could evoke with any clarity a single thought that Mother Nature's splendor brought. It was from the indigenous tongues that the settlers learned the language of the earth in all her idioms. Toronto from Takaranto, trees standing in the water, a meeting place where small fish could gather, nearby hills where alders grow, that was called Etobicoke. And in the autumn, before the winter snows, the passenger pigeons resided and rested in Mimico. And to the west, where the great waters flow, the lake and lands were called Ontario. The eagles soar high with prayers for Manitou. The Mississauga people smudge and launch their birch bark canoes. Three sisters, corn, bean, and squash. The planting season has begun. Tobacco is offered a gift to grandfather's son. Sage, sweetgrass, and cedar to grandmother moon. There is peace, joy, and harmony in the treaty lands called a dish with one spoon. Oh, we are all becoming the ancestors of future generations. And I would like to invite you this evening to collaborate through your art practice to design the architecture of the future that will ensure a more perfect tomorrow for the generation of the 21st century. So I will leave you with this one thought in a verse I wrote in another poem for a great artist, the very grandmother of all indigenous art, whose name is Daphne Oji. And uh, the verse goes like this. As our mother earth continues to evolve and the human family to exist, it is the artist who unveils our collective consciousness. We thank the creator for giving us the privilege to manifest such a gift. I urge all of you to cherish your personal privilege, being endowed with the gift of art in your heart. Megwetch, and thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Redbird. Um, that was, I can't imagine a more perfect way to open the celebration. And uh, the hundreds of students and faculty on this chat room and all the other hundreds on the YouTube live link that we have um, are going to cherish um, this, uh, this not quite, the send off into the next life that these, all of our students are going to be um, seizing and living as they move out of um, uh, being an OCAD student into an OCAD alum. So thank you, thank you so much. Those were such beautiful poems. And um, I'm not obviously reading my script, I apologize. <laughs> Um, and also, just to warn everyone, uh, I am having, like many of you, our students this year, you know, it's a weird year, I am having some strange internet um, issues today. So if I disappear completely, don't worry, I'm going to hop back in and John and I have sorted this out. 
So um, first of all, before I sort of give you a whole sense of what we're celebrating tonight, I do want to um, uh, signal, uh, sort of signal some of the folks that are with us here today. And um, our audience includes members of our executive committee of the university's board of governors. And so I'd like to give a warm, warm welcome to our chair of the board and vice chair, um, Jamie Watt. Uh, board chair and David Bennett, who is our board vice chair. I don't know if we can highlight them or if we can say hello, or maybe you can say hello to them in the chat. Um, we also have two board members, Mark Robert and Maggie Broda. So thank you so much for joining us. And I'm really also delighted to see so many academic leaders, faculty members and staff here, along with this year's 22 medal winners, graduating and current students, parents, in the live chat, live link there and friends. For the second year in a row, we've had to do things differently in light of the global pandemic. Second year, uh, it was not what we expected for sure. And we've moved what was has typically been an in-person event, drawing more than 45,000 people to our campus to a dynamic online exhibition and so much more. Um, we've created a new feature called the Marketplace um, where you can discover new artists and their unique and innovative work and even buy one of the works. So um, definitely check that out on the website. It's one of the, it's one of the links there. Um, and also we're showcasing the diverse talent of our graduates through video profiles and interviews on our 24 seven streaming service that will not be um, um, uh, <laughs> part of Bill C10 called OCAD Do Live. So uh, everyone seems to be starting streaming channels and OCAD is too. Um, and later this spring, we plan to have public activations within the community to present works by our graduates. And we've had a good response from at least 165 people who are interested in participating in these opportunities. Um, the RBC Center for Emerging Artists and Designers, and you'll hear from Zeb later, is also offering virtual tours to industry professionals and potential employers so that they can see firsthand the tremendous talent that is available um, for them to partner with and hire. And this month, Alumni Relations is hosting three events for alumni and students featuring Alumni of Influence Award recipients who will share how they have sustained their creative practice during these unprecedented times. So I, I, I give you all that meat about what GradX is just to show you that um, you know, it's really incredible what we're doing here, what our students have done, and we are not going to be stymied by a little pandemic. <laughs> we're going to reinvent the way we do our um, 45,000, you know, uh, guest um, uh, physical exhibition into these multifaceted transmedia, multi-platform um, dynamic exhibition. And I hope you all get a chance to see all of the different facets of that. So, um, but, but whether it's live or whether it's online, what can we expect from GradX 106, right? Well, we can expect to see innovation and imagination on display by more than 500 people. And I'm told that there are more than 2,600 works featured in our exhibition. It's a really wonderful place to get lost in that ePortfolio um, site that we have. And moreover, it's not just about looking at beautiful things. Our graduates are also addressing real world problems with creative solutions, like medal winner, Christina Derry, who is graduating with a master's in design for health. She has designed a program and an app that focus on, uh, focuses on how to help a young person transition from pediatric to adult healthcare services. Or like industrial designer, Justine Orbovich, who's responded to a need many of us have as we work from home, a comfortable chair. So she has designed a customizable chair for the home office that is comfortable, portable, and adjustable. And also graphic designer, Rahul Bagdai, created a video game concept that shows how festivals like the Hindu festival of Navatri can be digitized at a time when people cannot gather in person. His game is a design solution to the very real problems caused by the pandemic, such as distress, loneliness, distance, by offering an engaging experience online. And last but not least, medal winner Sydney Gittens is graduating from the advertising program. And through her work, she is elevating the voices of Black, Indigenous, and people of color within the advertising industry. 
What is evident in these examples, and these are just four, there's many, many more of this, but what's evident in these examples and across all of the wonderful work featured at GradX 106 is exactly what Dr. Redbird had uh, mentioned in, in the beginning, which is how art and design is a driving force for healing and innovation and change making. As a result, our graduates are improving the lives of people in our communities in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and abroad. GradX 106 also shows how OCADU is a place that nurtures creativity and fuels outside of the box thinking, which helps in turn to fuel economic success. I'd like to take this opportunity now to thank um, the people involved in making GradX 106 happen. So this stuff is not um, cheap, you know, and we always need the support of our partners. And so I'd really like to uh, thank the generosity of Hallmark for their ongoing support and Bentil Green Oak for their support as a new presenting sponsor this year. And now without further ado, um, my partner in crime, the best provost in the world, I'd like to call on Caroline Langell, our vice president and provost, who will say a few words and introduce the montage we have prepared to recognize our medal winners. Thank you, Anna. Unfortunately, I think I'm blushing. But um, in any case, this is a fantastic event. It's one of my very favorite events of the academic year. I've been involved for the past 10 years. Um, in one way, shape, or form. And so I'm really pleased to see this uh, happening today. And thank you, Dr. Redbird, for your fantastic opening. It was really inspiring for students and for all of us thinking about developing the architecture of the, the future within OCAD University. So while we cannot be together in person to see the works of our graduates on display, I know that you will, be, when you visit what Nicole Collins, Professor Nicole Collins called today, the sprawling and delightful online exhibition, you'll be truly impressed by the talent and imagination on display. GradX is such an important event. For our graduating students, it is their introduction to the world as they begin their careers. And as Anna said, we have more than 500 artists, designers, and digital makers, and I congratulate them all who have works being presented at this virtual exhibition. And the projects reflect the best of what they have learned at OCADU and the nurturing support they have received from faculty. The projects also show industry, governments, media, and the general public how art and design is contributing to find creative solutions to, 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 to today's challenges. I'd like to take this opportunity to extend a heartfelt thanks to all of our faculty members. It's been a tough year. But their ongoing commitment to their students, especially during what has been really demanding on everyone, is to be commended. But then I'm not surprised because OCAD is made up of caring faculty and staff. And our students are always at the heart of what we do. Tonight, we are also taking the opportunity to celebrate the remarkable accomplishments of our graduate medal winners at the undergraduate and graduate levels. This year, we are recognizing 22 individuals who are being acknowledged for their outstanding academic achievement, creativity, and innovation. So please join me in congratulating this year's medal winners. Advertising, Sydney Gittens. Criticism and Curatorial Practice, A. De Beerling. Cross Disciplinary Art Publications. Lean Kuhn Sun. Digital Futures, Brian New Yen. Drawing and Painting, Catherine Greenwood.
Environmental Design, Hala Al Hadithi. Graphic Design, Kyle Mirren. Illustration, Sid Sharp. Industrial Design, Shahbad Singh. Integrated Media, Jeremy Say Ah. Material Art and Design, Melody Juta Mankan. Photography, Kinsey Dempsey. Printmaking, Helen Tran. Sculpture and Installation, Christy Chen. Visual and Critical Studies, Kathy Wang. Contemporary Art Design and New Media Art Histories, Victoria Milne. Masters in Criticism and Curatorial Practice, Marilyn Adlington. Design for Health, Christina Derry. Masters in Digital Futures, Arshia Soban Sarbandi. Masters in Inclusive Design, Josie Gray. Interdisciplinary Masters in Art, Media and Design, Shara Mozafari Loristani. Strategic Foresight and Innovation, E. Raina Hawk. Thank you very much, Caroline, and uh, congratulations to all of our medal winners. Your work is truly inspiring and amazing. Now, what's really great is um, we've actually asked two of the medal winners to say a few words. Um, first, I'd like to introduce Brian Nguyen, who is representing the Undergraduate Program Medal winners. Brian is a fourth-year Digital Futures creative developer who is passionate about combining art and technology to enrich people's lives. In his collaborative thesis project, Prometheus, algorithms and digital agents were used in a simulated world to generate stories that explore the relationships of humans to the machines they create, and the impact of this on the environment. Welcome, Brian, and congrats. Thank you. Uh, so good evening, everyone. I'm honored and thrilled to be able to speak to you all today, though I really wish we all could have been together for this occasion. We as a year have had to overcome some significant hurdles and work through unprecedented times. It's something we should all be proud of as a graduating class. I know it's not easy to learn and be creative during these times, but we persevered through. The work from this year's medal winners is outstanding. And I just wanna say you should all be very, very proud. They're all so well-deserved. I'm honored to be able to represent us today. I'm very humbled to have been chosen as a medal winner this year. 
for me, being a medal winner, let me know that I'm on the right path. First, I'd like to briefly highlight some crucial people and say my thanks. Firstly, my teammates, Denzel, Isaac, and Roche. A year ago, I wasn't even planning to do thesis, but Denzel got the four of us together and we began laying the foundations of this project down. I wasn't thinking that a year later, we'd be winning a medal for it. We kept believing, working hard, staying up way too late on Discord calls, and here we are. Next, our thesis professors, Nick Puckett, David McIntosh, Emily Mann, and Adam Tindo. You're pivotal in guiding us and keeping this project in the right direction. Thank you all so much for your advice, guidance, and support. I also want to thank professors Haru G and Graham Wakefield. Your work at Artificial Nature was a big inspiration for our project, and we greatly appreciated the feedback you gave us. Thank you. I also want to thank the Digital Futures Jury for awarding this medal, and thank you to the GRADX team for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Looking back, I've grown a lot during my time at OCAD. Just four years ago, I came not knowing anything about the creative art and design world. I had a knack for coding and the passion to make fun and exciting things. It was uncharted territory for me. I knew nothing about the possibilities of combining art and technology or what it means to be creative. OCAD gave me the right push and the latitude to explore and build my skills while providing me with the foundational knowledge and theory that I need to become a competent designer and creative. In many ways, my thesis was a combination of all the things that I learned at OCAD. I hope as we leave here, we all continue to make great things. At the heart of every success story is a ton of failure, but even more hard work. But if you set your goals, work hard for it, and don't be afraid to ask for help, you'll really be able to overcome any challenges that stand in your way. Keep being imaginative, and thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. Let's give him a round of applause. I think there's tons on the clapping on the chat there. And congratulations again. Now I'd like to invite Irina Hawk to bring remarks on behalf of the graduate medal winners. Irina is graduating from the Strategic Foresight and Innovation Graduate Program and has a Bachelor of Design and Advertising from OCAD-U with a professional background in marketing. She loves working in collaborative environments, synthesizing complex problems with a human-centered approach. She is very passionate about designing with empathy and working on impactful projects, particularly surrounding the healthcare system and health equity. We need more of you. So Irina, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction. Um, firstly, I want to start off by saying thank you to the program jury for strategic foresight and innovation for selecting me as a recipient for the program medal. Um, it's a huge honor to be receiving the medal, and it's an honor to be sharing this platform with all of the medal winners in the graduate pro programs. Um, I would like to offer a big congratulations to all of them. Um, to me, receiving the medal is a reflection of the wonderful support I've gotten from my peers and professors in the program. Um, without their guidance, I would not have made it as far as my final research project and graduation. I got very lucky with the cohort I had. We had so many different backgrounds, talents, and so many opportunities to learn from one another. So a big, big thank you to all my friends from the 2019 full-time SFI cohort. I've had quite a few professors who have greatly supported and mentored me through my time in graduate studies. A huge thank you to Michaela Mastroni, Lorraine Randall, Peter Jones, Helen Kerr, Zan Chandler, and Greg Van Alstein. Reflecting back, I think it would be an understatement to say how much the pandemic has changed our lives and how we experience post-secondary education. I will admit it was a difficult transition from in-person to remote learning, especially in the middle of the semester and in the middle of projects. Um, my project teams did learn the hard way that maybe four hours of Zoom meetings were not the way to go, but I think eventually we all adapted and OCAD University adapted with virtual offerings and the subsequent semesters went on smoothly. Overall, my time at OCAD University has been very enriching. Um, the university has always felt like home since actually 2010 when I did my portfolio workshops there, um, then my undergraduate experience and now graduate studies. Um, it has taught me many valuable lessons that will be forever useful in life. Um, OCAD University has 
always fostered a positive environment for giving and receiving constructive criticism. And I think that's really important and has added a lot of value to my work life. Um, OCAD University has been pivotal in crafting my collaboration skills. Even though it wasn't always perfect, looking back, I really appreciate all the group work I had to do. And most of all, OCAD University has taught me to be okay with getting creative, thinking outside the box, and getting comfortable with ambiguity. I want to finish off by saying thank you again to everyone who has supported my journey at OCADU and to the program jury again for the honor of receiving the SFI medal. I'm really looking forward to catching all of the great work being showcased at GradX 106 and I encourage everyone to do so. Um, congratulations to everyone graduating. It's been a really tough year, but we did it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Irina, and congratulations again. And um, uh, I actually think that this is not the last time we'll probably see you and have you be part of the OCAD community for, for other things. And indeed, uh, the next speaker that I'd like to introduce um, runs one of the crown jewels of, of OCAD University. Um, I'd like to ask Zev Farber, director of the RBC Center for Emerging Artists and Designers now to say a few words. Thank you so much, and hello, everyone. It's great to be here to celebrate the opening of GradX 106. Uh, at our center, the work we do looks mainly beyond the walls of the university in order to assist all of our students and recent alumni with achieving their early career goals and to develop jobs or other professional experiences for them. Speaking to the exhibiting students, for many of you, GradX is a culminating moment the end of a lengthy and intensive creative and academic process. At the same time, for our team at the CEAD, in a lot of ways, GradX represents a beginning because it marks a turning point in your future career journey. Every year when GradX opens, ourselves and the public begin approaching your work as a bridge to facilitating opportunities and connecting with incredible talent. We see the virtual presentation of your work this year, specifically on the GradX website, as a unique chance for us to lead audiences of recruiters and collectors and mentors to you and your practices, not only over a few very early days in May, but for many months to come. This month, the CEAD will be leading a series of insider tours for this purpose, and we will continue these efforts in a variety of other ways as we support you on your path well beyond GradX. My congratulations to you all, and we look forward to helping you build on your successes. Thanks so much, Zev. And um, yes, you folks get to know Zev because uh, he will be a very good friend to many of you over the months ahead. Um, and uh, really the wonderful work they've been doing at the RBC Emerging um, uh, uh, Center for Emerging Artists and Designers has really been uh, phenomenal. Um, and I think, you know, there's no way we could have uh, a GradX to, that really celebrates all of you um, if we didn't have some kind of performance, right? So I'm delighted to introduce tonight's musical guest, Charlena Russell. She is an Afro-Indigenous Canadian songwriter, a classically trained multi-instrumentalist, multimedia artist, and music teacher. Charlena is a one-woman show complete with vocal layers, video projections, and a sound-activated light suit, you'll see it soon enough, um, she designed with inventor Bernie Rode. She was a guest per performer at OCAD U's on-site gallery a grand opening in 2017, and we are honored to have her here with us this evening. Over to you, Charlena.
authors, runners up, collaborators, and all of the great Grad X participants. The online exhibition is beautiful and I enjoyed seeing all of the many programs represented. Well done on all of your hard work over the last year. I've been spending my time songwriting and teaching music online and I really enjoyed performing for all of you tonight. Looking forward to the Grad X public activations on campus and around Toronto. Wishing you all a wonderful Grad X 106. Thank you so much, Charlena. And um, for those of you who don't know, she, uh, Charlena, not did everything like the videos, the editing, the 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 the, the beautiful, um, uh, you know, wearable technology um, uh, clothing that you're wearing. It's fantastic. So thank you so much, Charlena. It's really wonderful to have you with us. Um, it just makes me want to actually see you live. <laughs> like I'm desperate to be in this. As I told you, <laughs> I wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been good if that my internet did not break down, but I did hop back on. So, uh, you know, we, this is, this ain't a party until the internet breaks, right? So we've come, fortunately, we've come to the end of our celebration. And again, I want to thank all of our participants in tonight's event, Dr. Redbird, um, Provost Caroline Langell, medal winners, Brian Nguyen and Irina Hawk and all of our medal winners, um, Zeb Farber and Charlena Russell. I'd also like to give a shout out to all of the members of the GradX committee for their collabor co uh, collaborations in bringing our exhibition and associated events to life and for supporting our graduates. And thank you to the organizers of tonight's virtual celebration. Um, of course, I'd like to extend my sincere gratitude to our presenting sponsors, Hallmark and Bentel Green Oak. I encourage you all to actually peruse the many, many activations we've got online and outside. Um, gradx106 at ocadu.ca is the place to start, slash gradx is the place to start. It's on the chat. It's better for you to click on that link than to remember what I just said. Um, you'll be truly impressed and amazed. I know I am. And to all, all of our medal winners and to all of our students, I wish you all the very best as you embark on your careers. Congratulations on all your work and all your accomplishments. And I would be remiss if I actually didn't say this, which is, you know, you folks are the special ones because you have made all of this work during such a difficult, difficult year. You know, um, I think uh, three years from now, five years from now, it's not going to be the pandemic graduates that we're going to be calling you. It's the, the, the resilient, adaptable, incredible, amazing graduates of 2021. So thank you so much. And thank you for all of the faculty and staff who supported your journey this year. And congratulations. Have a wonderful evening. And uh, uh, we might run into each other online as we look at everything. Take care. Thank you.